You may be seated. Uh, welcome this morning. You may see that I'm a little lopsided this morning. Uh, had a little incident this week with heavy objects and a toe. So uh, um, just pray for me as I spend two to four weeks in this thing, which knowing myself, it's going to be closer to the four. So uh, a couple brief announcements. Uh, one, we talked about the updated uh, numbers uh, last week, and they're still elevated at this point. Uh, so be cognizant of your fellow uh, friends and family. I keep hearing more and more cases, though not as um, severe, much m many more positive results. So, And the numbers we're getting probably aren't really real because of all of us doing at-home testing now and not reporting those results all of the time. So please uh, be cognizant and remember that as Methodists, we are uh, charged to do no harm, and that includes doing no harm to all of those around us. Don't forget we have our churches in uh, the front and in the uh, back for your deposits of tithes and offerings uh, for your convenience. If you didn't get it as you come in, you can get it as you go. BBS is back the 17th through the 20th uh, with the worship presentation on the 21st. Um, is, and then we have a meeting um, <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, if you are planning on helping with uh, VBS, please uh, put that on your calendar. Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Yes. We'll make that decision at at well no at the time of the time it'll be a it'll kind of be a day of decision kind of thing uh, where where we yeah yeah it, it, it's going to be a a last minute decision based on what things are going we've still got a couple weeks and trends can change dramatically in just a couple weeks as we've seen with this throughout this whole past two and a half years so uh <laughs> yep um if you are planning on uh helping at vbs and we're not able to make it to either of the safe sanctuaries trainings please let me know i've got a form i need you to fill out and then i will send you the link to do the online webinar so uh We'll get that so you're all uh, trained and ready to and have gone through all, everything that you need to do for that. Ice Cream Supper is on the 20th from 5 to 7.30. Martha Jane, do you have anything on that? Right, so that's in place. And remember, we're bring your school supplies, um, and that will be your school supplies or donations for school supplies, and that will be your entry ticket. So uh, remember that. Yes. Put them up. <laughs> I. I <laughs> If you didn't hear, uh, Annette's got extra flyers and cards and posters for uh, both the ice cream supper and the um, BBS. So if you've got some place that you know you can put them up or, and let the community know we're back open and doing things, um, have them there and we can put them up. And I talked to Jordan yesterday and she said we have five already uh, online registered. So uh, uh, if you are planning to send somebody or know somebody that is coming, please direct them to our website, which is at the top of your bulletin. And right on the home page, you scroll up just a little bit, and there's a link for the registration. So uh, uh, that will help get us to where we need to know, where we know the numbers of, so we can prepare for the meals that way, uh, at least in a get an idea. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> yeah. A one to one ratio. Uh, yes, Ann. Uh, I didn't know that my pastor had uh, had a little incident with his motorcycle until I came to church. So <laughs> now I'm just going to let him tell you what he did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to spill all of the beans. It wasn't mine. It was Erica's. But I bumped into the tire and went to pick it up, and it slid out of my hand onto my toe one toe all the pressure all the bike onto one toe not uh not a great day so, i didn't really say anything actually it was one of those moments where there weren't words to uh fulfill it we'll just say that <laughs> Yeah, hey, hey, dudes and motorcycles probably aren't the best combination. <laughs> oh. Yes, it, it it's a broken toe. It's a broken toe. Yes. So you understand, you understand. <laughs> I didn't. The mower did. All right, let us enter into a time of worship this morning with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. Join me in prayer. Lord, we come, we're gathered here as a community of faith, gathered here in your presence, Lord in your presence in which we ask for each and every moment of each and every day, where we know that you are with us, Lord. We know you are walking beside us each and every day, Lord. We know you are here. Act in and of us each day, Lord. For we have plans, but you have guidance, Lord. We have direction, but you, Lord, move us in the right direction. Continue to be with us throughout this worship service today, Lord. Guide us in our singing, guide us in our scripture, guide us in our message, and be with us here at the table. As a gathered party, may we worship you louder and brighter and shinier than we have ever before. As this in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I like the part where he said, louder. Didn't you like that? And you know, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord together this morning. I've been away some, and every time I come back, it's just that wonderful feeling. And, uh, and it's Christ. It's Christ dwelling in all of us that the family, when the family of God comes together, there's just a spirit about us that helps us to shine. And that's what we're going to sing about. Shine, Jesus, shine. So let us stand and offer our praise to God.
heard our singing this morning. I think he did. Amen. Let's sit down together. This time, I'd like to open up for prayer requests, praise reports, and updates on situations in each of our family's lives. And Dale texted me a request that I wanted to share this morning. He's requesting prayer for his uncle, Wayne Brown. Uh, I don't know the situation. I just know he's requesting uh, prayer for Wayne Brown. And prayers for Gracie as she goes to uh, basketball camp today to get looked at by some for some scholarship stuff. <laughs> Are there others? Yes. For Lucy Robbins, who is been diagnosed with breast cancer and facing surgery. Yes, Linda Brown has her knee replacement surgery tomorrow. So be in prayer for her. And that's why she is not here, is that prior to procedures, she needs to isolate a little bit. <laughs> yes, Jerry. Mary Ann neighbors as she transitions. You did. Um, Erica's grandma has been uh, popping back so well that they took her off a of hospice. So uh, she's doing really well. Um, so. Thank you for all your prayers in that situation, and hopefully we won't have to go down that road for a, a few more years. So. Mm -hmm. For the family of Ronnie Wayne, Wayne Wright. Parker's MRI was good, and she's been in no pain. And I've seen her, I've seen her up there when I'm dropping Jeremiah off for band camp. Well, at least you see the car. <laughs> oh, I know. And Jeremiah is at band camp for week two this week. So if you're ever up by the high school in the mornings, they're outside, and in the afternoons, they're inside. So. And if anybody's interested, uh, I will put out, I believe they're doing a showcase kind of thing on Friday. I don't know the exact timing yet, though. Are there others? Are there others? Continue to keep Ann Hunt in your prayers. She's having a little real rough time the last couple of days. So uh, um, she's coming up on a lot of anniversaries. So uh, she's having a rough time. So keep her in your prayers today. Join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you. We come to you always and often. We come to you when we are in trouble. We come to you when we are in pain. We come to you when we need you in our lives. But Lord, we also come to you and praise you for what you give us each and every day. What we are able to do and be and be witness to because of your direction, Lord. You, Lord, are the compass that we follow each and every day. 
And when we remember that as human beings, we are able to stay on the path that you have us on, Lord. Continue to guide us down that path. Continue to let us know where we are to go, who we are to see, what we are to do. For we can make plans. But Lord, we look to you for direction. We can make and have ideas. But Lord, we look to you to follow through with those ideas. Lord, we can come up with ideas that are so grand in our own minds, and our own thoughts, and our own ways. But it's only through you, Lord, that those plans can come into fruition. Continue to guide us. Continue to make us not a church of this building, but a church of the community, of the nation, and of the world, Lord. Continue to let our love spread beyond where we feel it could ever go. But let us know, Lord, that you are there guiding us each and every day. For we know when we follow you, we are doing the good that you have in store for us. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the prophet Isaiah, starting in the first chapter, 10th verse. Hear the word of the Lord through Isaiah. Hear the Lord's word, you leaders of Sodom. Listen to our God's teaching, people of Gomorrah. What should I think about all your sacrifices, says the Lord. I'm fed up with the entirely burned offerings of rams and the fat of the well-fed beasts. I don't want the blood of the bulls, lambs, and goats when you come to appear before me. Who asked this of you, this trampling of my temple's courts. Stop bringing worthless offerings. Your incense repulses me. New moon, Sabbath, and the calling of an assembly. I can't stand wickedness with celebration. I hate your new moons and your festivals. They've become a burden that I am tired of bearing. When you extend your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. Even when you pray for a long time, I won't listen. Your hands are stained with blood. Wash. Be clean. Remove your ugly deeds from my sight. Put an end to such evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now and let's settle this says the Lord. Though your, your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. If they are red as crimson, they will become like wool. If you agree and obey, you will eat the best food of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. The Lord has said this. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let us stand again together and sing together the Thy Word is a Lamp. <clears throat>
be seated. What does it mean to be good? What does it mean to learn to be good? I would say this depends a lot on this context that you're in, where you're at at the moment. For me, being good in high school and elementary school and middle school meant I didn't end up in the principal's office more than eh, once or twice a year. That meant I was doing pretty good. When I began working, not ending up in the boss's office meant that you were doing pretty good. But what does it mean to do good in the eyes of the Lord, spiritually? What does it mean to be good? Well, for generations, being good meant being obedient and following the laws that were set forth generations prior by bringing those burnt offerings, bringing the incense, bringing the gifts to the altar. But what is Isaiah hearing here as the prophet? Isaiah is hearing that things are changing, that the Lord doesn't necessarily want those things anymore. And quite frankly, I'm glad Isaiah came up with these thoughts and feelings long before I got into ministry because I'm not sure I could have dealt with some of the things that were being brought as gifts. The gifts that are being given today are much different than the gifts that were given in the time that we are finding ourselves. But each of those gifts meant that they were being, those folks were being obedient. Obedient to the laws of the world and the laws of spirituality. But what happened? The Lord told Isaiah that things were going to change. No longer were those burnt offerings what needed to be given. No longer were the blood needed to be given. No longer was the incense a form of an offering to the Lord. Because those were things of this world that showed the wealth of this world, not the wealth of faith. And when we look at that, and we look at that, the wealth of faith and the wealth of love, that's when we really learn to be good. I want to reread a couple verses for you. 16 and 17. They say, wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. And here we're given the instructions on what we are supposed to do to learn to be good. What has to change in our mindset? Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. And defend the orphan. And plead for the widow. Those are the notions. Those are the acts that we are charged now to do as Offerings to the Lord. So when they say wash the blood off of your hands, it's saying wash yourselves of the old ways of doing things. Wash and cleanse yourselves from the ways in which you were doing them for so long. For they had become traditions and for generations and generations. And we still do that today. We have traditions that we do Every single year at a certain time, for instance. We have traditions that we do monthly with communion. We have traditions and ways in which we do things to show our love for each other and our love of God. But the Lord's telling us that some of these things aren't for the Lord. The Lord's actually telling us and speaking to us through Isaiah, allowing us to see that some of the things that we're doing 
isn't about the doing for the Lord. It's about the doing for us. Our scripture mentions the festivals, the new moons, the old moons. There they're speaking of the pagan ideas of the festivals of light and dark. But we have festivals that we do each and every year. And what if the Lord came and told us through the prophets or through a prophet that we aren't supposed to do those anymore? Martha Jane would be out of a job. The Lord told us that we are no longer allowed to do certain things that we have been doing for generations and generations. How would that make us feel internally? I can only imagine that those that were hearing uh, Isaiah speak at this time were stunned at what they were hearing. For they had read in the Torah, at synagogue, at other times, heard these messages to bring these offerings, bring these things. Get This is how you learn to be good. And you are good in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord comes down and says, yeah, that's not working anymore. Instead, let's do it this way. Instead of worrying about the stuff, worrying about bringing things, worrying about giving things and wasting them at my altar, let's do for others. Go out and go beyond and do for others. See, I see this as a little bit of a foreshadowing of the life that Jesus would be living when Jesus would become flesh because see jesus's entire goal in life was to seek out those that were oppressed to seek out those that were orphaned to seek out those were who were pushed away or were forced out of communities jesus went and found them and made community with them that was what jesus did that's justice that's what Je- Isaiah is speaking about here. So if we think about it in that instance, these words, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow, it's the actions of Jesus Christ. And the actions of Jesus Christ equals love. So in order to learn to do good, we have to learn to love. And not just love in the idea that we Love on those that are like us, those that think like us, feel like us, love like us, but to love on others, to seek out others and love them like you would love your best friend. Love them like you would love your cousin or your sister or your brother. Love them as if they were one of you. Because guess what? We are all in one family, the family of God. We live in that family. We preside over that family. We want to be part of the family bigger than what we can do here in this building. But that's easy to talk about and much harder to do. It's easy to talk about, but it's much harder to do. See, the Lord asks us to go beyond our comfort zone more than we ever really know. Sometimes we do it, but I would say more often than not, we don't. Tell you a little story how the Lord guided me out of my comfort zone just yesterday. And I haven't even told this to Erica. I was up getting a soda at the BP on Providence Church, and out of, you know, just because who I am, I'd go up and do a lap up at Level Cross just to make sure everything's still upright and vertical since there's nobody up and around there. So I'd seen two individuals that looked like they were arguing, which is not uncommon, walking up and down uh, Business 220. So I went up, did my thing up at Level Cross, talked to somebody that was up there for a little bit, turned around and came back. As I'm coming back, those two individuals 
a man and a woman were now in an altercation. It had become physical. She was being dragged into the woods by him. I didn't know the situation. I didn't know anything about what was happening other than what I saw. But did I just keep driving? The Lord told me to whip around as fast as I could, making illegal U-turns in the middle of the road, and get back there and help. Come to find out, it was an ex-boyfriend situation. But we got the law involved. Somebody else had called the law and, again, was guided by the Lord. It was actually a real estate agent showing a house. She said she just needed to turn around. But the love that we showed and we were able to show her, even if she wasn't accepting it at that moment, was the love that we are called to do. The love that we are called to do right here. Rescue. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Now, I didn't know her story. Things came into my mind as I was talking to her. And hearing her talk to the other woman because she seemed to feel a lot more comfortable talking with her. I could have made up a bunch of stuff, but instead, I just stood there and prayed for her. Gave her some of Jesus' love. Allowed her to know that there were people that did care for her. And that's what we are called to do. Those situations come upon us each and every day. Each and every day, week, month, whatever it be. There's moments in our lives where we feel like we are being guided and directed by the Lord to seek somebody out. I challenge you to begin to do that. I challenge you to seek out those on the fringes and show them the love that you show your family. Because they are family. They're in the family of God. Jesus purposely would seek those individuals out. But also remember, Jesus oftentimes would tell those that he helped, do not tell anybody about this. It's not about pride. It's not about getting recognition for it. It's not about anything that we as human beings get. Instead, it's about just sharing the love. I never told this woman who I was. She'll probably never know who those people were that stopped that day. But we showed her the love that she needed at that moment. And that's what we are called to do. The love like Jesus showed in giving us his life. A love that we are able to relive each time we come to this table. A love, and I'm going to try not to fall down here. A love that is shown to us every time we come and interact with Jesus at this table. So let us prepare to have a meal with Jesus. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift, your, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A couple brief instructions before you come up. You'll notice we've got the new baskets on the both ends of the pews. Those are for putting your empty cups in so we don't have to uh, shuffle around and make as much noise. And then we will pick those up after service. Now, as you're instructed to do so, Please come forward towards the altar table and receive your elements. I recommend shaking the cup as you return to your seat. And when everyone has completed this and returned to their seats, please remain standing as you are able, and we will partake in the elements together as a family gathered, family of God gathered here this morning. Come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often, and you who have not been in a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Come.
If you haven't already, please remove your top seal. Reveal the wafer. Body of Christ, given, given as a gift for each and every one of us who partake in it, each and every time. Amen? Please remove the second seal. Reveal the juice. The blood of Christ shed not just for us, but for the entire world to live with the covenant of the Lord. Amen? Join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. You may be seated. Walk humbly with the Lord. Please rise and receive this blessing as we go out. The Lord knows. The Lord directs. The Lord gives. The Lord wants us to hear. As the song said, we are planting seeds. We may not see whatever comes out of the goodness of our love. But it will be there, and it will be of the Lord. So go forth and love each and every one of our neighbors like you would love the Lord each and every day. Amen? Amen.